Hello and welcome to Zimbabwe Celebrity Hub. I'm your host, Mona Lisa Dube, and this week we have a people's favorite, former cabinet minister, advocate Fortune Chassie, who is currently the member of parliament for Mazowe South, and he has allowed us into his home, and we are going to have a chat with him, get to know him a bit more about what he's doing now, and his family. And you're watching Zimbabwe Celebrity Hub on Nash TV. <laughs> so please do come in. Advocate Chelsea, thank you so much for welcoming us into your home. Thank you. So you live with your kids? Yes. Uh huh. I do. All right. Yeah. So, what what sort of father are you? In are you one of those strict fathers? Um, I think a mix of uh, of both. Um, but you know, I, I think for you to be a father, it's not it's not it's not the biological aspect of it. It's what you do with the kids. Or she didn't like what? Nengechi. Yeah, you know, like vanana fa leta shamari zako. Uh, you should let them in into big decisions. They should um, um, say what they think. They should be critical of you. But where do you draw the line, though? Because um, uh, it's interesting that you say that because it's not a very conventional way of raising kids. I'm sure mm -hmm. if your parents would hear you speak like this, they'll be like, no, that's not how you raise children, right? Yeah. So where do, you, where do you draw the line? Yeah, I think as you move along, you know, with your filial duties, uh, both sides, the, the, the father and the kids, you get to know that beyond this, you know, you, you, can't, you can't say this, you can't do this with him. Um, you can't really have like a, a list of things, but when kids, as they grow, they know your sensitive spots and they try and, you know, factor their own um, you know, views into that sort of relationship, into that frame. Uh, but basically, I think, uh, I'm, I would say I'm very democratic. Uh, I'm very inclusive in terms of, uh, um, you know, decision making. Uh, if I in have, the home. Yeah, in the home, if I have to you know, buy a big asset or sell a big asset, um, I, I consult them and sometimes I just say, okay, make the decision and let me know what mm. you think is workable. And that, uh, that works for me. So you also give them a chance to make mistakes. They will make mistakes, they sometimes big ones. Mm. But uh, I think such is life. So um, that's, that's uh, the father that I am. Do you think that this has contributed to the person that you are known to be in public? Because I think you're one of the most followed leaders in, in government. Mm -hmm. You're one of the most interactive people on social media. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see you everywhere. You literally everywhere. Yeah. Is this this sort of mentality that you have taken into your public life? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, you know your private life should essentially mirror your public life. So, uh, what do I mean by that? You you can't be an irresponsible parent and be a very responsible uh, politician or public figure. Mm -hmm. You know. So, in my view, what you see of public figures reflects. What happens in the house? Uh, you can't use foul language as a public figure and uh, be very strict with your kids as far as language is concerned because they see you using that uh, type of thing. So, um, yes, I think what you see uh, on uh, uh, social media is by and large what I am. Um, uh, I'm not sure that I'm one of the most followed. I think I'm one of the most talkative. Or maybe most interactive. Most, most in interactive. Because I've seen uh, public figures with uh, uh, 800,000 followers, 
but uh, also, but for me, what is critical? No, but is public figures in in in, in politics. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very rare, though. That's yeah, very rare. <laughs> but I mean, you have got exceptions. Mm -hmm. You you have got people that are active on uh, on Twitter, for example. Right. Um, politicians generally along the uh, across the political divide with significant numbers, and then the other so-called. Uh, Influencers. I'm still trying to understand what that means. <laughs> you know, with my little following, I, you know, youngsters ask me to retweet their businesses. Mm. Because Do you charge them for that? Oh, no, 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 okay. no, no, I don't. Um, it's my contribution because, you know, somebody has got 400 followers, mm -hmm. but they have a good business they are running. They don't have a marketing uh, budget. Mm -hmm. And these days you can take advantage of social, social media. media. So, all I have to do is to um, to to post or um, retweet their mm. tweet, and it gets a bigger audience. And uh, many of them have come back to me to say, "The moment you retweeted, I got phone calls." You know, so it's it's really working with young people trying to play a role in in their business. So. All right. So let's let's talk a bit about uh, about politics. You are a member of parliament yes, uh, for the Mazoe constituency. Yes. Um, before we talk about your work, right? Yes. You have been in the ruling party for a while. Yes. What do you think it is about? Okay, maybe let me ask it this way: mm. Why is NPF? Well, look, um, for a long time, the dominant uh, parties in the country were essentially. Uh, you know, ZANU and ZAPU, and when they came together, they formed uh, ZANPF, and uh, you know, those were the parties of liberation. And so for, I credit the little achievements I've made in my life to those two parties and the people that participated in the liberation struggle. So I, uh, I know that, uh, you know, political parties change over time. They are not stagnant. I mean, the objectives will keep on evolving. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, it's important that uh, um, I'm in a party that worked for the liberation of, uh, uh, of the country. And um, so far as I'm concerned, now is the time for me to also play a role. So um, that's my reason for being in uh, uh, in San Pierre. Mm -hmm. What would you say to young people that might not agree with you on this? Mm. Well, I, I think it's perfectly okay not to agree. Uh, and uh, I, I think we need to understand. I grew up, I was born and bred during colonial times. So I have uh, experiences of that time. And so I can't blame somebody who's 18 for not having that experience. Um, I didn't grow up during Mbuyane uh, Anda's time or Chaminuka's time or Mziligazi Lopengula's time. Which so, era are you from? Uh, well, look, I was born in the 60s. And so I, I grew up under uh, the oppressive Rhodesian government. I know exactly what the soldiers used to do, how they bundled us into concentration camps, how they would beat up people and so forth. Um, I also know that uh, pre-1980, there was no prospect of me staying here. Uh, In the I, north? Yes, you know. So um, I, I find it difficult to blame young people. I find it easier to blame my generation and beyond. Uh, to the extent that maybe not much has been done to uh, make sure that younger people understand history. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't just uh, blame them. Mm -hmm. They were not there, you know. Uh, so maybe we need more information and uh, good ways of making sure that they understand what is happening and uh, why things um, should be in a certain way. But uh, my, my observation, or what I think is uh, very critical, is for people to understand that life is a collaboration. Right. Yeah, young people and 
old people. But during the discourse that happens, uh, one gets the feeling that uh, the two social groups are mutually exclusive, like uh, it's either a country is run by young people, it's run by old people. Not a combination. It's, it's, is, it's, is this why yeah. you try so much to be, we spoke about your being interactive yeah. and uh, trying to relate with the young people. Is this where it comes from in that you believe that people have to work together, be yeah. with, with uh, regardless of the generation they come from. Exactly, um, that's exactly my uh, my philosophy. I think that we there they, they, they isn't enough sincere intergenerational uh, discourse. Um, by that I mean that we don't talk to each other uh, intergenerationally in a manner that understands what are the concerns of young people and what are their interests and what are the concerns of uh, uh, the elders. Um, if you read the Bible, the Bible say that uh, Simon said, um, uh, oh, Jesus has been born, now I can die. Which means, according to him, uh, people were now in good hands. Now the question is, for young people, uh, are our elder generations, our current leaders, are they in a position to say, okay, now we can rest? Do you, do you think that uh, you can leave this um, where the country is right now? Do you think that the young people are ready to take over based on what you're saying? Yeah, I don't think we've done enough to bring them up to speed. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, some form of uh, uh, succession planning. But young people don't seem to, to, to agree with that. Yeah, well, I, I think they have to agree with that. I think that's the way it should be. You know, uh, it's like if you join a company today that's 50 years old and you want to replace the CEO the next day, it's simply not workable. That's why people are groomed in organizations. And I think the responsibility is for the elders mm -hmm. to give youngsters space, uh, you know, have a lot of hand holding before the hand shaking to say, okay, um, this one is right. I don't think it's really about the number of years. Mm -hmm. I think it's what is in your mind and what you can do. So you'll find, for example, like we you know we're talking about engagement with young people. For me, life is a collaboration. Um, I have uh, done uh, lots of music with young people. Mm -hmm. And my first album was Life is a Collaboration. Uh, that's how I met the likes of uh, Soldier Love, Killer T, and men of them, or Askelab, and all that, men of them. I spent a lot of time in, um, in the ghetto working mm -hmm. with them. And uh, they were actually hand-holding me. They were telling me how studios work and you know how I should sing, where I've not you know sung properly. And I mean, singing with the soldier love was uh, almost a nightmare. Why? Because of course, my say, But for me now, I I to practice. Mm -hmm. I remember the song that we did, I drove to Mutarenbeck, practicing four lines. How come? Because you are just so strict, you know. Uh, the, the, the usual way is Mpuru Ndiano Dissam But here I was a subordinate. And you would just say, no, Chibabes, Chibabes. How did you around. get the name Chibabes? I, I'm, I'm curious to know. How did we Mabasa get the name? Chibaba. Chibaba, Doja, Gataura, Otibua, Kunzi Chibabes. So, yeah, because, you know, we were very good friends mm -hmm. and arising from the work that we were doing. And my appreciation of the immense talent that I don't think we are tapping. Um, you know, when... Yeah, soldier love could not speak without rhyming. But if you ask me to rhyme, mm. so you spoke about um, soldier love yes. and the contribution he made uh, in your music career. Should we call it yeah. that? Mm -hmm. What What do you miss the most about him? 
You know, um, Soja Love was a very unique character. I think in the literary, literary world, I would equate him with the uh, Dambuzo Marechera. Soja Love was a highly gifted, highly talented individual. Very complex uh, character, uh, everyone knows. Um, could be very difficult, um, but uh, very kind and very loving. And I think that, uh, you know, as a society, we did not heed or see uh, his calls for help. Mm. You know, the... It was used as content. Exactly. It was more of content, you're mm. right, you know. Uh, uh, obviously, there were drug issues. Um, I tried to work with him on those uh, the issues of diabetes, which were causing problems. Uh, his uh, music is replete with pleas uh, about, you know, people dissing him as, mm. uh, you know, foul-mouthing him and not appreciating what he was going through. Mm. And if you see some of his uh, uh, videos, his recordings, you know, interviews, you can see that he's actually teary as he expresses himself. You know, he wants to cry, to say people don't understand exactly what I'm, I'm going through. His desire to have a child. Mm. Uh, I think uh, in his music you can tell that uh, he considers himself to be a livestock, uh, you know, a, a, what you call a laughing stock. Mm -hmm. um, people not appreciating how that was hurting him and his relationships, his um, plea for his woman to come back. And so uh, we, 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 we met a lot. Uh, uh, he would visit, I would visit him, and he would always appreciate um, my visit and advice. You know, uh, I remember when his um, house was bulldozed. If you see where he grew up and what he was trying to do to come out of uh, the ghetto and he called me when they were actually demolishing and I rushed there to see what was happening mm -hmm. and it was heart rending and you know knowing how much he valued that project uh, it was also quite hateful for me um, and so yeah we, we had a lot of intersections in our, in our relation then of course uh, him helping me with the music mm -hmm. and just company taking me to all the studios and uh, uh, I still want to do a song for him. So how can we avoid another situation like that where someone who is evidently in need of help and constantly calling out for it like you're saying, yeah. how do we, how do we uh, make sure that doesn't happen again because you find when it comes to arts people just rule it off as, as a lifestyle yeah um you know it's a it's a it's a difficult thing it really means i i also feel that maybe i didn't do what i was supposed to do because you want to have limits you want to say you know your friends uh, you realize that somebody's got challenges but you also want to respect them their boundaries their, yeah mm -hmm. exactly and but I think we could have responded. When I say we, I say I think of you know uh, people in the music industry, uh, people in your profession, because you guys were interviewing him, and you could see the challenges and the generality of the public, people in positions of authority. Um, you could have been uh, assisted uh, to manage his business better and that would take away the stress of resources and uh, that would help him also to come out of the drug situation and, and so forth. And uh, I don't think we did what we could. Of course, he was well acknowledged by the public. He mm -hmm. was a mega star. Uh, I think he's the youngest person to be... Declared a hero. A, a hero. And that's an example to young people to say, yes, you can do what you do so well and you'll be recognized but i think the recognition for young people needs to start 
when they are doing their things by supporting them so that they realize their full potential. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk about your passion mm. for music. Mm. Have you always been into music? Like, what is this passion for music? Where does it come from? Do you believe it's a talent you have or it's a talent that you're trying to exploit? Uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a talent maybe I'm trying to create, if I have that capacity. <laughs> Uh, at high school, I was fired from the choir. That's how good I That's am. How, okay, good. We'll go with good. <laughs> That's how good I am. But uh, look, in 2014, um, I was fired from government. And um, Do you want us to talk a bit about that? Why yeah, not do a you? Problem. Why? Why? I mean, you were. You've been the, the deputy minister of transport. You've been the deputy minister of justice, yeah. uh, and then mm. you were the minister of energy. Mm. And based on um, the work that was on the ground, we'd hear about you paying out the debts we owed countries. It's like you were progressive; like we could see the tangible results. Mm -hmm. And then you had to be let go. So people were now asking, "Kuti, koji, chukiti, kaj, babe, swaita se." Were you? Did you see this coming? Uh, do you think it was fair uh, or you, you were just like, it is what it is? Okay, so let's start from the beginning. So uh, I'm an MP and the, the Basara MP will represent our mm -hmm. it's, not constituency constituency and it's not for me to make money or to cut deals, but to represent people that uh, otherwise they've got no voice. Mm -hmm. So we had a situation in Mazowe where uh, people that were in the area called Manzo just on the other side of the dam, um, they'd been there for years and uh, they were being evicted without notice at night and so forth and so on during the rains and I couldn't stomach it so I spoke about it and so as a result I lost uh, my job at the time and I also lost my farm at, at the same time. But uh, um, I think that was a different sort of scenario. Uh, it wasn't uh, performance or job related. Mm -hmm. I think there were other factors. But I think the critical thing is uh, you should always move on and learn from what has happened. Uh, when you become a minister, a deputy minister, it's not as if you are exceptional or special but you take charge of the opportunity to give your own contribution to... Were you touched? Did you take mm. it personally? Did it bother you for a while? Yeah, well look, I'm the sort of person who, when they have to do something, I give it my all. So naturally, to leave what I've been doing affects me negatively, but it wasn't personal. I, at no point did I ever hate my uh, Mgabe, even up to now, we eventually met and uh, we spoke. And I think meeting and speaking uh, made us better human beings and we related better. And so there was no bitterness uh, even up to now. Mm -hmm. um, then you mentioned being Minister of Energy. You know, you are appointed by the President. Uh, not because you are very clever, you are exceptional. Mm -hmm. But obviously because he sees some value that uh, you can add at the particular time. There is a misconception that I was um, fired. I don't think I was fired. What, what do you call it Well, then? the letter that came to me said I was relieved of my duties. <laughs> so, you know, when you, when you speak of relief, you are really saying... You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> in other words, <laughs> I cannot work at I cannot work at But, you know, I was, I was just. I was just. And uh, that is perfectly, perfectly in order. You know, it's, it's almost like uh, in soccer. <laughs> One was a super sub 10 minutes before end of match. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, it's not only boys, it's not only man or no boys. I, I like your approach, Honorable, yeah. but yeah. Honorable Magazine. I hear you. 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 I hear 
Nanti kalau in data meeting na six a a, na invest, ni mana direct ibu ministry right? Karena Sunday, nanti tu kan seven a m. So, mana yang waktu nong tu nong fana nanti kamu lagi raga dah ya. Acha don, acha fend, entah. Mau bisa apa side? And who knows? Who knows? One day, one person will write. I, I, I like your approach. I forget <laughs> we, we love to see it. We love yeah. to see it. Mm. But do you do you miss working in, in government? I know mm. you are still in government in your capacity mm -hmm. as MP Wekumazowe. Yeah. But do you do you miss working in government as a minister, as deputy minister? Yeah, to be honest, I I do miss um, working in government because you know being an MP is one thing, but being in a space where you can influence things where you can influence uh, work culture work ethic for example within the ministry where you can influence uh, policy development like to down mm -hmm. you know where you can influence good okay my gets the customer service mm -hmm. any customer could call me and say you know and and i would you know do what i could to solve that problem working so Definitely, I miss that. I like pro you know, problem solving. Right. But you don't have to be a minister to do that. You can do, you know, you can. There are many people who are doing probably much, much more than ministers within their spaces, in mm. the private sector, or even in ministry. So what are you, what are you doing now? Because you mentioned that you don't really have to be a minister for you to uh, have an impact in your society. Yeah. I know earlier on we spoke about how you're assisting young people with businesses on social media. Mm. So how else do you think you're contributing mm -hmm. uh, to the growth of, of Zimbabwe? Because you do know we do have a lot of issues as a country. Yeah. And like you said, it needs all hands on deck. Yes. Uh -huh. So what, what role do you think you're playing? Well, there? you know, um, one of the disadvantages of uh, being... Uh, in cabinet is that you really do not have as much time uh, uh, for your constituents. Mm -hmm. And so uh, now being out, I have more time to be with the constituents. Uh, you know, like I was telling you earlier, there's a school right behind those mountains where people have started gold mining at the school. And you are more practical and not general in terms of uh, you know problem uh, problem solving and also being an mp now uh, when i was in cabinet i couldn't ask my colleagues questions uh, in parliament but now that i'm out i can ask questions relating to their ministries mm -hmm. uh, uh, in so far as they affect the generality of the public or people in my constituency so I do that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a lawyer. I'm, you know, I have banking experience. Um, I specialized in corporate governance. Mm -hmm. um, I have specialized in international law. I have specialized in international business law. So I, I'm consulting. I've, you know, I've done IP, intellectual property. So there are many things really that I do mm -hmm. in my private time. Okay, speaking of private time, I know we then spoke about a whole lot of other things, mm. but I had asked you about mm. your passion uh, for music. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where, where are you taking that? Well, I, I think that's really ongoing. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, uh, my dream, uh, if, if I have the space to influence that, is uh, I see the music industry or the arts industry um, as an exportable product. Um, which needs governmental support at the bottom, you know, certain pillars. Um, for example, in my experience uh, singing, I know what uh, young people are going through to mm -hmm. produce a piece of music. My niece, uh, Rudo Chansi, is a very talented singer, and uh, I tried to push her music. It was so expensive to produce a song. Uh, to produce a cover of a CD, uh, to, to get a band, hire the different artists to perform with a, to enable a to record, to do a video, uh, it was, it's so expensive for young people. So in my view, uh, there needs to be support 
Mm -hmm. uh, it, there needs to be. Well, where are the wheels falling off, in your in your opinion? Because, like you said, we have a lot of young people that are talented, mm -hmm. but they are lacking opportunities, and and like you say, they are lacking support from the government. Mm -hmm. Where are the wheels falling off? Should we put more money towards the the art sector? Yeah. I think that um, um, uh, well, I'm a strong believer in that uh, this particular sector needs to organize itself, galvanize itself around issues of uh, production of music, um, come up with uh, proposals, because a government department will not have experts in everything. Some may be academic experts. But they don't have the practical experience but, of but, recording. But is government accommodating to get uh, outside information and actually put this together? Yes, I think so. I, am, I, I know particularly, I mean, the ministry responsible for the arts, I think they're very open-minded. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think, I, I don't see anybody being violently opposed to proposals that are coming through. But I don't think that that is happening. And I think the support needs to cover the entire value chain of producing music. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, getting equipment for musicians, uh, helping uh, producers, having they have studios and the necessary equipment, those that do uh, videos, getting the necessary support. Mm -hmm. And I think that a fund can be created uh, for that purpose. Uh, it's not about throwing money at musicians or producers mm -hmm. uh, or filmmakers and all that. But I think it's putting support structures. That explains why Nigeria is a big player in music and filmmaking. Uh, because of those structures. Because of those structures. So, and it's musicians and the players in the specific areas who must come up with the, the necessary pillars that support mm -hmm. um, the, that particular industry, then we can become exportable just, we have to, you know, have a paradigm shift in terms of conception of the industry and move to a point where we look at the industry in the same way as we look at mining and agriculture. What are the support structures that we can Right. Do? And those are the practical um, issues and concerns that young people face because most musicians, uh, most uh, fashion-minded people, uh, young people. Mm -hmm. uh, you saw the guys that came to see me and were taking measures. Mm -hmm. Measurements, those are young people. So what kind of support uh, can they be given? And policymakers um, react very well to organized people who come up with uh, things that they would like to happen. Right. So, um Speaking of your interaction with young people on, on Twitter mm. uh, during the, the years, over the course of years, and you being the mess of energy, um, there was a point where people were amazed, for lack of a better word. Mm. They were in awe of your work. And mm. I think there was a trend that ran, Chelsea, for 2023, I think it was, it ran on Twitter. Well, how did you feel about that? Because we know that issues to do with that are very touchy in this country. Ah, Mafia Rosa, but in Shongwe Basa could eat, and it's a banana machine. In Shongwe Basa could eat, and Basaraja are one of whom it is one that I eat cover out the cheese. For a warning, a warning, a rig, and it. So, well, look, it's not something that I have uh, spoken about myself or planned, but uh, you know, it's a free country. People express themselves, uh, others will be joking, but one of my times, the guns were. But down to Sunganisa Misque, Nevakuru, and so forth. But uh, you know, it doesn't work like that. But you know, it's our country. Mm -hmm. And uh, if uh, an opportunity arises, um, I don't see why not I should give it due consideration. You are just saving your country at another, at another level. level. Yeah. I, I, 
I don't believe in the mischief of uh, getting carried away with the Twitter and, and all that, but um, I don't ignore what they are saying. But uh, some of it is not sincere. Mm -hmm. Like one of the people who are in the world, they are in the world. 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 They are in uh, you don't look broke. I, my looks you, you do, I mean, we, we no, just had a tour of your house. That uh, is not a broke uh, man's house. No, I'm going to go to the house. 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 All right. <laughs> as, we, as we wrap up this conversation, yeah. what would, as advocate for Chunchasi, yeah. what would you want to be remembered for? Yeah, that's a tough call. Look, I envy those that came before me and some who are still alive who have uh, been impactful to our country. Um, I think that I have been able to achieve the little that I have because I've uh, been riding on the shoulders of others. And so this is what uh, informs my interaction with the uh, young people. Uh, when we grew up, we didn't have such opportunities. Times were tougher than they are now. And so I would like Because to, of the color of your skin. Yes, principally, you know. Um, and living in a house that was smaller than this room, um, but uh, so I would really like to be impactful to uh, youngsters, particularly in the ghetto of Kumamisha, because in the open area, we are not going to go there. We are not going to go there because we are not going to go there. So I know the difficulties of going to school without shoes, long distances, and uh, being in the ghetto with very little space. We are going to have a bedroom, a bedroom, a bedroom, a bedroom, a dining room. Is in a dining room table. We a spare room, which is never spare because you don't have no 24/7. Don't have no empty garage for all your life. Most it's like a kitchen, and it. So I am familiar and I understand those things. And so my dream is to be able to help others to uh, get on the ball, but to get on the rods of foot. And so to help people, youngsters, to come to you know improve themselves and <coughs> come out of the ghetto and basically have you know have a good life in our country if i can play a role within mm -hmm. that uh, i'll be deeply honored that, that, that's a, a a narrative that a lot of um maybe successful people run with but ah, it's not good to, and mm -hmm. then you've been on the record saying you were once a vendor and you were selling yeah, uh yeah. eggs it's easy. like how how true are these narratives how ah. there's a much <laughs> way they can see Nenga mushda kuti nyaya nyaso make a sense. Aiyo, we gadi nyaso ko utamani. No ma, vanya e ufenda ga. Nina atinga sasa sunja kwa hand. Dola buda pache na nyaso la kwa hand auti chichi. Because when you are dancing, after advocate minister, if you don't go and go bury it, you are dead. I grew up in a poor home in Blawa, and in my day, I thought that I am developed. Get ready, ready, power, and I thought that I do re pamba. And I used to sell boiled eggs. I respect boiled eggs. I used to sell them bow my name. Why is it that I need to die? Why so I did? We don't see our father and the pesa. I know to write them. We don't write. We 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 write. I was a good daughter in fire. In the morning, you move, I'll name them and go and jump away. I may not put no anger. I'm going to go to my police. My police. I will go blues. I think I said blue so. Graphic as my own jumbo says, my room so. We don't go to it. I didn't see which man and did it. Auto to get out in. But stop here, I just say. Or of an old yaso Tarangorna moms was Zair Noroveka for the ten ten. No rich girl can always snow miramus. So I did all that. Um, 
So who vend a lighty? I want to know your book and it. They are wearing a book and they are all meet a blazer. A chattered vend. No one experience. That's not what you are right or in your writing because Madomasi, Dovich, Bagichagabiko, Makutisi, is preparation. My mother used to knit my vegetable. So the one I'm not taking some Madomas and I took a two man, those are part of a problem. Because as I know, I was soon dead. Because I got a Ganaras. You know what I mean? So it's not it's not artificial. Certainly for me it's not artificial. I I'm proud of that experience because it makes me understand. Uh, but it also uh, ignites a feeling in me to help others. Especially na mai wanomuka kuma four three a.m. kuno order muka card box kaga dai kutwa no tenges to bring up people like me. So it's you know things that I would like to be part of. Advocate Chelsea, mm -hmm. thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm deeply honored to have been with you. And that's all we had for you this week on Zimbabwe Celebrity Hub. And as you heard from the advocate, and Zimbabwe Bani per Twitter, guys, my pins are busy. And next week, we have another exciting episode with another favorite Zimbabwean media personality. Let us know who you think this is. Until next week. <laughs>